Oh dear. And I had to go click the button. I was watching the intro. I thought that was a pretty good looking <laughs> intro. Hi everybody, we're Mike and Jennifer Wendland and this is Ask Us Anything. It's Sunday night and uh, wherever you are, we hope you are having a great time. A lot of you online waiting for us. And um, before we get too far along, we have a super chat already. Super chat's that little dollar sign at the bottom. And uh, when you click that, it's a way to kind of support us in, in all of our uh, you know video and blogging and podcasting and all that stuff. And, uh, and also YouTube gets a cut. <laughs> they give us a little cut. But uh, we do thank you for those. And we always, they always kind of go to the head of the line. And James Harris had one, a $5 sticker, a super sticker. He sent that cool little pair character and says, how's it going? It's going great. Thank you, James, for, for doing that. And the first one on is uh, E squared this, uh, this evening. And he says, greetings from southeastern Michigan. That's where we're coming to you from. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Happy Sunday and ask us anything live. And uh, you were number one on our list. And uh, thank you guys so much. Um, thanks to um, Chris and thanks to Phyllis uh, for being our moderators for the chat. We couldn't do it without them. And I uh, want to remind you throughout this about the thumbs up. We like mm -hmm. those. Right. Why do we like those thumbs up? It's kind of like it's kind of like somebody giving us a pat on the back. I think that's the way we kind of like it. So uh, do that. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, we always appreciate it if you, if you do that as well. Uh, so if you have a question... Type it all in caps at the top of whatever it is you're writing. And that way, because uh, we get so many people and it's you can see how fast the chat starts to scroll and it helps us to, oh, there's a question. There's And if it's a comment, uh, like uh, E squared just did with his, uh, you know, see he typed all in uh, caps comment. Uh, and like Linda did with uh, Linda from Robbinsville, New Jersey with her question. She says, I know that when you travel, you take notes. Do you use a commercial travel logbook and what data do you record? As the official navigator of the RV lifestyle, why don't you answer that one? Well, I have paper that I write things down on, our gas, and I'm having technical problems. Yeah, tonight. we had a little technical problem there. The streaming stopped because of a cell phone issue or a cellular issue. I don't know what it is, so hopefully you're all back and we'll just keep on doing that as best we can. Hey, another super chat. Wow, we're getting a bunch of them today. This one from uh, Jazzbad1, $4.99. Thank you so much for that super chat. We do appreciate every single one of those. They really uh, they really are nice, and it, uh, it's kind of an encouragement. So anyway, you were talking about uh, when it's really nice when you uh, find a spot you like, uh, answering uh, Linda's question. Um, oh, that's a new question. We'll come back to that, Linda, in just a minute when we get to there. But, uh, here it was when she asked you about your logbook. What do you do? I just write down gas, mileage, miles when we start, how many miles we travel that day, campgrounds that we stay at. And then if we really Any like it. Any expenses that I want to write down. If we really like it, we take a picture of it, right? Right. Now, I've often thought about having, there's a bunch of apps out there people have, and I looked at them once, and, you know, it costs so much money to develop an app, and you only sell them for like 99 cents. So we're not going to develop an app. And there are stuff, there is stuff out there. You can make a spreadsheet. People have done that. We just have found that it's easier just to write down on a little paper in a pen. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big tech guy. I love uh, electronic gadgets, but this is much easier. And I'm a big paper and pen person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do use a, you know, a, a online planner and all that stuff. But I do, a, I have a daily planner I use. And I do a daily journal that I hand write out too. I really like doing that. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Linda, I know... Okay, I keep coming back to Linda. Mm -hmm. I like your question, Linda. <laughs> uh, Potter Pup, are we too old to start RVing? 67. Yep, you are. <laughs> Come on. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? There are 85 and 90-year-olds out there. You haven't even begun. 67 is like it's the not new too 47. Old. Yeah, it's not too old. <laughs> Get out there. I think that's a, I think you're a plant there, Potter Pop. You know that you're not too old to get out there. You know, you're as old as you feel you are. I think that's what we've learned yeah. as we got old ourselves. You're as old as you feel you are. And 
the beauty of this lifestyle is you can be as, as busy as you want. You can be as laid back as you want. And you can just sit outside and look at the scenery or you can hike, whatever you're up to doing. And um, like I say, people are doing it in their 85s to 90s. And uh, we, know, we know a lot of people who are uh, well in their 80s that are still doing this. Bradley, besides your gravity chairs, do you travel with any other for your attachable table? Well, we actually have a... <laughs> We got a whole menagerie of chairs. <laughs> We've really gotten into these um, rockers that Camping World makes. The Summit Rocker. It's kind of a oversized rocker. Actually, our children gave us those each you, one for our ago. birthdays because our birthdays are both in February, and they were too big for us to take. And so now we can use them, and they're very comfortable. Yeah. So and they would they fit right up with that and little table we have. And we've got, still have, we still carry those same Pico folding chairs. They fold down to about this big. And what we use those is if we're going to go have a campfire with a bunch of people, we'll all go over there and we'll take those little chairs with us. If we have guests, I can set them up for people. And we we've had those for 10 years now. now. We have too much room now, so we're taking too many chairs. Yeah, we, That's well, what happens when you have room, you use it. Yeah, it's not too much. Yeah, uh, That's great. Um all right, I'm kind of looking for questions. I think this is one because there's a lot of text. Uh, on a distant episode, Jen mentioned a phenomenon with the transmission on an incline. Can you review that frightening experience? Oh, I know what it was. And can it happen out of the blue? That was when we went into limp home mode oh. in um, South Dakota. We were in the Black Hills. We were in well, our, that was our when diesel. you were driving. We were in a diesel Sprinter, so it won't happen in, in this new Ford Wonder, or this Wonder on the Ford Transit chassis. It's a gas engine. But, I had it happen once uh, between Kentucky, Tennessee, when I just crossed the yeah, line. That was in the Sprinter, and too. Man, I, I got, I gave it to you. I, it is? Are we on? Yeah, we're back. I don't know what happened, uh, why it keeps dropping way too many revs up, and I kind of blew out a part. A turbo part. It was operator diesel. error. It was operator error. The second time it happened, it was a fuel um, a fuel valve uh, on the Sprinter diesel engine that clogged, and that was easily fixed. And that is so though. scary, though, when it happens to you. Yeah. So we got those all fixed. And uh, again, I want to remind you: if we suddenly drop, stick with us. We'll keep coming back. I've got alternate internet connections here and I'll go to some of those. I'll go to we our had new it once in Florida too. We were driving Limpon? down to Florida. So that was that same fuel valve. Yeah. And I mean, oh, you just sweat bullets because you're on yeah. I-75 and you have no acceleration. Yeah. And it, it's not fun. No. It's not fun at all. All right. I missed a couple of questions. Uh, somebody said, are you using the Nomad this evening? No, I'm not. I'm actually trying out the um, Weingard Wi-Fi booster, and I'm trying. I'm accessing Wi-Fi in our house in Michigan and bringing it into the RV. Usually, it showed me just before we went on a really strong connection. So I don't know why it's dropping, other than it's seven o'clock, and maybe all of my neighbors are watching TV and or on the internet or whatever. Um, so if it drops again, I'm going to try a couple of the others. I have a wine. I've got the the Nomad system we can go to, and a couple of others we we can. So. It, it, it worked out well. Uh, how do you make money on the road? How do you make money at home? Um, you find people who will pay you for your services. Some people do work camping. Um, some people are hobbyists and they go around to, to different uh, uh, art shows. Of course, in the COVID season, not many people are doing art shows. Um, in, in our case, we're writers and we're bloggers and we're podcasters and we're YouTubers and we sell sponsorships just like you would on a TV station or in a newspaper. Um, a million other people are now doing that. So it's getting harder to do. When we first started nine years ago, there was like nobody doing it. Now it's everybody. So that's kind of drying up. But uh, other people have found that. Uh, I'm going to see so many more people RVing because we've all learned to work from home. Um, people who have uh, skills that they can do on a computer, you can do them from the road. So we've seen people who do part-time accounting from the road. We've seen artists do website design from the road. 
Doctors? Doctors. We've met many doctors who, and nurses who are traveling nurses and doctors. They travel around the country. They work at a hospital for two, three weeks, a month, then they move to another one. Um, you know, just about anything you can do remotely, you can do from the road. And this COVID shutdown we're in has so many of you working remotely. Why not? Why not do it from the road? And uh, I can't it, believe anybody would, especially the big cities, want to do that commute back downtown once oh they've learned how to work gosh. at home. No, so much better. Uh, what has been your experience with absorption fr refrigerators? We so look forward to this time with you from Mike and Jen. Uh, thank you, Mike and Jen. Uh, we've never had an absorption uh, refrigerator. We've had compression refrigerators. The one we have now is a three-way. It's the same one we had in our previous RV from Dometic. We absolutely love it. 6.7 cubic feet. Uh, I guess we did have an absorption. We had absorption in some of our road treks. Hmm. But... Um, We've just had no problems with these, and um, it, it's they work great. So I like ours because it will work when we're on the road. It'll work with 12 volts charge in it, or it'll work off propane. We have LP gas in ours. When you're plugged in uh, or uh, when you're um, working off of the batteries, we have lithium batteries. It will work uh, under um, with the batteries. Uh, it, it, it works three ways, so it's always powered up. And uh, we've not had any problems at all. Some of the early on compression, you couldn't even be a little bit off level and the refrigerator wouldn't work. But we've had no problems. And trust me, until we got our automatic levelers, we were off level a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you having issues off. with your domestic refrigerator too? Ours has trouble and won't go below 50 degrees. Well, um, no, <laughs> our domestic refrigerator works great. We lost our, our every now and then our um, ice cube maker doesn't work. That's always kind of a pain, but uh, that's good. Oh, Steve's noticing my Midland t-shirt. Uh, I got him on the works for getting a ham radio license. Be careful if you transmit near an open repeater without the license. Mm. I have a ham radio license and uh, work all the time. And uh, and I also have the, the GMRS thing. This is, we did a video on these two-way systems and when they sent us these radios to try out, they also they sent us T-shirts. So that's it. That's what we like. Hey, I think I just saw another um, super chat. I better go get it because, uh, oh, here it is. Wow, this is a big one from Melanie Queen of fourteen ninety nine. Uh, Melaton Queen, would you suggest purchasing an RV for your first home? You guys are a loving couple. Well, thank you. We are a loving couple. Been a long time, <laughs> yeah. a lifelong traveling companion and my bride. <laughs> Um, no, I would not suggest an RV for your first home. I, I wouldn't Why get not? it. Well, because um, how do you know you're going to like it? Well, then you get a sticks and bricks house. Now, it sounds okay. Okay, then go for it. Uh, <laughs> I just think you ought to make sure that you really like the lifestyle. Maybe and, they've camped before and they really yeah. like camping and they want to see things. You know, If you know and have had experience camping and have had, I don't know who you're, how many people are going with you. Is it just you? Is it a, a spouse? Is it a, a partner? What, whoever you're going with? I don't know. So, and you travel with dogs, uh, but make sure that you've lived for extended periods of time in an RV and then you'll know how much room you need and whether it's for you. So many people live in bees, the little spaces. I mean, and then I think you could live in this for a long time. Yeah, it's months. it's all, you know, a lot of people are going to tiny homes. You don't want to pull weeds like I've been doing for like a month. <laughs> you, know, you don't want the yard. You don't want those responsibilities. Hey, a uh, matter of personal privilege, a good friend of ours from Fort Walton Beach, Ken Michelson is here. He's Princess's daddy from the <laughs> dog park down there in Fort Walton Beach. Uh, one of Bo's buddies and uh, Ken, the uh, is, uh, is mine. Good to see and you. And say on. hi to Riley. Riley, your, yeah. Your granddaughter. Riley, your granddaughter. We miss little Riley. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, let's see. In your podcast on two-way radios, you mentioned RV are starting to use them. Is there a channel they're using? Um, no, there's no channel on the family. Oh, no, there's no channel yet on the family, mo family um, radio service, FRS, the, the one you don't need a license for. The general mobile radio service, GMRS, which you do need a license for, it's just sending in paperwork and some money to the FCC. Uh, you don't need a license. You do need a license for that. It has more power. 
um, truck drivers, they say, hang out on Channel 7. And I've not heard any yet. And we will be trying that out a lot over the next few months. And I'll let you know, we will probably hang out on Channel 7 as we drive, just because I read truck drivers are supposed to be there. So we can see how that works. In the campground, like when we, when Jennifer, if you saw the video yesterday, Jennifer uses it to help make sure I don't hit anything up above or on the side. Uh, and that camping site that we were at, it was uh, a lot of trees. Yeah. And I talked a lot because when Mike's making a video, he says, say more words, say more yeah. words. But, <laughs> but I, I, it, I mean, I had to like thread the needle to get around in between some trees for this ideal spot. So uh, that was... Uh, that was careful. Uh, question, do you, uh, okay, how, do, how does a camper handle a moth infestation? Fly swatters? I don't know. Uh, uh, you would have to get a pest control person and have them do something about it. Uh, pest control, yeah, and find out, uh, what are they, There's they like seeds? There's some little moth, it's a little tiny, itty flower? bitty thing they get like in that. Flower. They get in There's your home, name at home, yeah, and uh, the person that I hire, he just, you don't want those because they're really tough to get rid of. So I, think I wish you, I'd remembered the name. They, but I think it was with flour that they're in. And yeah, they get in the your case, food. They have flour in your Get them out of your RV. Get the flour out. Yeah. And then that's their food Just, source. That's the same with mice or anything. You've got to yeah. get the food source out because they'll keep coming in. Put things in containers where these things can't get in. Yeah. Bugs, moth. Uh, do you ever have to sanitize your fresh water tank? If so, how often blessings to that blessings to you too it depends on um, how warm it is yeah warmth does it we try and i always sanitize the beginning of the season and right about now uh we'll be we're planning our big trip uh for the fall which as soon as labor day passes we're taking off oh, I, for, I forgot i got, got huh. a tooth that has yeah oh yeah there. labor day and <laughs> then you gotta have a tooth pulled <laughs> so it'll be a couple days after labor day but we're going up to the upper peninsula of Michigan for about two months, a uh, month for sure, maybe two months. Uh, and uh, we will sanitize it before I go up there because it's been hot. I don't have any water in it right now. And, it's just sitting And in don't the forget, we make our plans and then life happens. Right. Life <laughs> happens and maybe we don't. I got a big post, by the way, in uh, on the blog coming tomorrow. If you, This is the perfect time to go to the UP, September and October. If you've never been to Michigan's upper peninsula, just... It's like Glacier National Park without the mountains. They told somebody else <laughs> that today, which means it's not like Glacier at all, but it's really nice. It's beautiful, we can wild. Yep. We can pretend. We absolutely love the UP. And uh, if you've never been there, it's a great place. We've got a, we like it so much. That was our first seven day adventure guide book that we wrote. But I got a big post on the blog free. It's going to list 10 of our favorite campgrounds up there, things to see, do, lots of videos. So you'll find that at RV Lifestyle tomorrow and you'll get a link on it when you if you subscribe to our um, newsletter you'll see that first thing in the morning too but uh, i'll sanitize before we head up there so sometimes usually twice a year and then um you know i drain it all and winterize it and uh then i at the start of the season i always sanitize it uh, uh, then so we'll we'll see uh okay questions can you do a video with rachel boyer did you do? Yes, I did. We did. Rachel's we our did. grand. Yeah, Rachel's our granddaughter. Uh, we went boondocking with Rachel, and she's on our channel here someplace, up and, camping uh, in the woods with us. And she's our granddaughter. Silver Lake. Oh yeah, she's also she's a she's a regular star. I keep telling <laughs> Rachel Boyer, if you know her and you must, you, you got to call her until she needs her own YouTube channel. I'll help her. I'll I'll manage her. She can be a star. <laughs> <laughs> she could you know Rachel if you know Rachel you know that but anyway she's on our family vacation that we did last year up at Silver Lake as well a couple years she ago. was teaching you how to well, do a couple years what do you ago. call that I thing that all the kids do some dance but I should have practiced harder because then I found out our littlest granddaughter who was only a couple three years four years old knew how to do, do it, it. Yep. yeah Question from Kathy what's the longest you've stayed in one place in your RV and does it seem kind of tight for longer stays Longest we've ever stayed we in one stay place. Any place very long. A week, maybe, about a week. Yeah, we've done a week, but that's about it. Now, I I I, I say that because we will, for example, we'll go boondocking, and we love this spot, and we'll stay for what three nights, but then we'll say like at Yellowstone, we'll camp at some of these national park or these national forest grounds outside of Yellowstone. And we'll stay there for three days and then we'll say, okay, we want to go to the other side of the park. So 
we'll boost camp and we'll go and we'll find the Gallatin National Forest outside the west entrance to the park. And we'll camp there for three or four days. So, and then, you know, we've been on the road for months at a time. But we go to, we, we are always on we're the We're always moving because we're producing videos. We yeah. don't stay in any one spot. We kind of stay in an area, but not one spot. I mean, sometimes we'll... We'll, we'll just go two miles away and camp in a different spot, in a different location. Uh, that's the nice thing about a smaller motorhome like this. It's We're so actually easy. actually a little ADD, ADHD. <laughs> I, think, I think we are. I think we are. Uh, okay, there is that camper about the moth infestation. So I see where I am. I kind of jump around. I get those super chats and I got to go find them. And, and then I lose my place when I come back. Uh, uh how do you keep your van and yourselves free of the pounds of Bo's hair? Oh, oh I don't have any on We have tonight. dog hair. I had my mask on the other day and I had dog hair inside the mask. I mean, when you have a Norwegian elk hound, you have, you have hair. You have fur. Yeah. Fur uh, everywhere. Uh, yeah, it, uh, he's not shedding too bad now. He sheds usually twice a year. And uh, he's not too bad, but he's, there's still, there's still. He's our fourth elk hound. And the two females that we had really, really shed. He doesn't shed quite as much. Hey, here's uh, from Kaori. Uh, Kaori? That's an interesting name. Kaori. Uh, love your videos. Uh, I want me and my mom to live in an RV, but I don't know about all the hookups or running an RV. Can you help me with that? Depends on what time you get or what kind you get. Yeah, just look on the videos on this channel and you'll find other other RV uh, channels out there as well. And just watch those. We call this the University of YouTube and uh, YouTube University. And uh, you follow some of the blogs. We've got a ton of information on our blog at rvlifestyle.com. And uh, it's a piece of cake. You'll be able to do it, you and your mom, without any problem. And if you forget, somebody will help you how to do something. There's somebody out there that'll help you. I just love you too. I'm in the same age group as you two. Wish I was with you. Maybe someday I'll be on the road too. I hope so too. We'd love to see you. Uh, let's see. With your reaches purchase of a Nomad Nighthawk, do you need a wine guard? Backup. Uh, no, you don't. You, you can get by with one. In our case, we live and die by the internet. As you saw tonight when we were just losing it. So we have the wine guard, which gives us a, a, a good amplification and a, of uh, Wi-Fi signals. I'm bringing in the Wi-Fi signal from our house with that tonight. Uh, the um, wine guard also has the Verizon 4G LTE SIM card in it. And because it's up on the roof, the antenna gets pretty good coverage from Verizon. And my new Nomad is on the AT&T system. So if I'm in an area where AT&T is strong, it's awesome. If I'm in an area where Verizon is weak, I can go to AT&T or vice versa. So I have the backup, the redundancy. And that's uh, that's why we have all of those systems. But most people do not need those. Uh, they just don't. Um, all right, back to some more of the questions. And let's see. Uh, where is a question that we haven't answered? From Dean, do you have any recommendation on portable power stations? Um, I don't know. You mean great big ones like uh, like mini generator power stations, or do you mean uh, like the I use the Mophie M O P H I E, which is uh, enough to power and charge a laptop, and it's enough to charge our phones, and I can charge that by solar. I got a little solar uh, panel that will charge my cell phones in that Mophie, and I carry that around. Truthfully, I don't need it much because I can charge everything in the RV. I have, you know, lithium batteries. I've got solar here and I can plug it in. So the only portable power station I have is that. I get requests all the time from different manufacturers, most of them, you know, Chinese manufacturers who write and they want to send me these things to test out. And I, I very, very few do we ever try. Uh, and I, I, cause I don't really need one. And I don't know whether anybody else really needs one. Maybe if you don't have lithium, if you don't have solar, if you've got just a couple of wet cell batteries, maybe that would help. But in our case, and most of the people that we talk with, it's not a priority. So I haven't tested those out. The only thing I do is that little Mophie station so we can charge a cell phone if we need it. Didn't you tell me that the other day you had 10 
peop, 10 contacts, people that wanted you to test this? Oh my gosh, yeah. I had 10, that was a record, 10 people. I, and I keep track of all of them. Um, I mean, it's, it's crazy some of the stuff they want me to try. Like this stuff, and, they, a little, and then they want to send it to you, which is kind of nice. But um, you know, then they want you to write a whole story or review on it and give them all that, that attention. So now, for example, Midland Radio, they sent us one and I thought that was a good possibility. They said, hey, would you test out our system? We're going to go into the RV market. We want to know how it works. Try it out. I'm kind of a two-way radio junkie anyway. I'm a ham operator. I was a CB. So I love that stuff. He loves that stuff. So I said, can't yeah, have too I'll, many radios. I will, you can't. I, so I said, I'll try it. And I did. And I did a video on it. I didn't charge them anything for it. Uh, you you know, got a free t-shirt? I got a free t-shirt and I get to use their gear for a while. Um, but, you know, for a hundred and whatever the value of all that stuff, you know, a couple hundred bucks, you know, I'm, I'm not going to charge them for that. And, and um, they got more out of the deal than, than I got, except I had fun doing the video. Uh, so we kind of pick up the stuff we, we like. Would you ever consider an A-class, a big A-class RV? We get this question every now and then. Sure. And we would. Sure. <laughs> I would never drive it. I mean, you're you really have to crate. drive it. Yeah, you know. Then you'd have to tow a car. I, I've moderated it would be huge. on this. You would have to tow a car, but there's a benefit in that too, because you oh, yeah. could then use the car to go run into town. You know, for a long time, like most of the last 10 years since we've been doing this, I never would we ever want an A. You know, and, and I've learned that over the years, don't never say never. Uh, I sound like a politician, don't I? <laughs> um We've never driven an RV uh, an any a. bigger than a C, which is where we're in now. We've never driven an A. We've never driven a fifth wheel. Uh, we did at one point own a small little towable 13-foot travel trailer. I did tow a travel trailer with our Class B all over the Rockies. But anyway, back to an A. I've never been in an A other than visiting them at RV shows. It's not on my I'm, wish list. It's not on our wish list. But I would list. never say no to anything. Yeah. And sometime we should find one that we can borrow and try out and see what it's like. Maybe we'll rent one sometime. I don't know. Because I don't, I, I, I've learned, I'm not going to say never because I've never, I don't have any experience with it. We've always loved the small motorhome lifestyle. That's been kind of our little niche. So I, I would be surprised. Um, you know, I think that most of the Class A manufacturers are, they're marketing to really a much a much older crowd really than us even. Well, maybe not. Maybe not the same. anymore. Yeah, probably not anymore. Because a lot of people are living in them as their home. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yes, we would consider uh, trying one anyway. Uh, but um, we'll, but we'll it's not on my wish list. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, more questions. Let's see. Lots of you saying hi, and I, we really appreciate that. Uh, Leslie, a little fashion question, says, uh, hey, Jen, you look great in that color. Thank you. I love bright, bold colors. Yeah. I'm a winter. Yeah. Uh, how is your satellite working for you? Any problems with trees? Uh, I just wrote a story about there is no satellite in this unit. We have decided we're not going to put one in it. And I wrote on the blog, if you go to the RVLifestyle.com blog, you'll see a story we wrote this week on why there will be no satellite in this. Um, the reason, the biggest reason why is we're not TV watchers. No, not at all. And uh, we have not been watching TV since we came home. We did in watch June. when we were locked down with everybody. We were down in Florida in our condo. We watched the entire Downton Abbey series on television. Really enjoyed it. I never thought I would. Then we watched The Crown, and then things loosened up. So we don't watch TV. And when we're out in the RV, we're hiking and camping and shooting videos and exploring and taking a nap outside, you know. And I think everybody can agree with, you don't want to hear the news right now. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. I am avoiding the news. Yeah. I get enough without trying. Yeah, you get it, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, I know what's going on. It's crazy. So, and it's only going to get worse, you know, until this election. So we're not we're kind of sticking away with but we're not TV watchers. Now, we might watch a Ken Burns documentary every now and then. Yeah. But what we do want to watch, I can watch streaming with our, our system, our internet That's system. That's what we here. use. So we, we stream and we'll watch stuff where we want like that. We have some DVDs. We can watch DVDs. But we don't watch TV. 
So that's the first thing. The other reason why is the satellite has to have a clear line of sight. Our hobby, if you looked at the video that's up yesterday, you see where we were demonstrating how we use the two-way radios to boondock. We, we tend to stay in the middle of the woods someplace or in a forest. I don't like camping out in a big open field. It's too hot and we're out there to get to, to enjoy the scenery. And when you're in the woods, more chances than not, we don't have a good signal for the satellite. And even when you do, it takes forever. Every time you go someplace, you got to reboot it. And that takes like about five minutes, maybe even longer sometimes to acquire this signal. And then if you want to watch local news, you got to go online and say where you are. And then they got an off. It's just a pain. So. And so, I hate commercials. I mean, I got to say, gosh, oh, we turned into king. Yeah, well, you know, YouTube puts them all on now. So, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so we're not going to get a satellite system for this. Now, that's us. So don't get mad at me. If you, Lots of people love to take the convenience of the home. Full-timers, I understand. Even if you, you know, and then they have all so many of these RVs with TVs in the side of the RV outside. And if you're in a camp, it's one of the reasons we don't like campgrounds. Because we go there and everybody's watching TV. I, and then they hello? can be like one foot from your rig. And you watch, you're hearing the same thing. And, and uh I mean, we've been in places I, where people are watching TV from the moment they get up until 11 o'clock at night, it's on, on this outside. I mean, that's not our thing. So we don't, we stay away from campgrounds like that. And, and we're just not big TV watchers, especially this time of year. So, I, I mean, it, you may love TV and that's cool. That is great. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's great. Frank says you're still having fun. We are. Yeah. We are still having fun. I'm antsy to go, but the campgrounds, everything's still too crowded because this is an unusual year and school isn't starting the way it normally does. You know, people are still out there camping, which is great. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You don't have to buy a new wardrobe this year. Rafi, I'm new to your channel. I really love the way you guys present. I'm zooming in on leisure travel. I would like to know from you the issues that you've had with your various these are travel RVs. This is our second one. We had a, a Unity on the Sprinter chassis, which we loved and kind of sometimes still miss because it had a little slide out. And this one we just bought because we wanted to be wanted to try the Ford Transit chassis out. It's up and coming. That was the number one reason. We like the two twin beds in the back of this unit. We Made like up all layout. the time. We love the garage with the extra storage. We, we have, have no idea how much equipment he brings. So all that stuff, the reasons why we switched are on the, on the video. In terms of problems, we had a step motor that burned out uh, that was re uh, repaired under warranty. We had a... And that um, wasn't the step's fault. It no, was, well, uh, we think. We can't prove it. We can't it, prove it. I think it was the mechanic we took it Because it to. worked when we took it into the mechanic and when we brought it back, it didn't work. We think what happened is it tried to open and it couldn't there was something in the way and it was bumping against it. What other? Well, no, oh, no, and no. we had, and just in the Unity, we had a um, gas valve that had a slight leak. You could smell a little of gas and they fixed that for us, you know, on the uh, propane outside. Um, so it wasn't a, a, anything you smelled on the inside and it wasn't anything serious, but, but they fixed that. So we've had no real problems with it. No issues at all on the leisure. And, um, you know, and we, we drive our RVs pretty hard. Uh, where did you get your sheets for the twin beds? I haven't purchased them yet. I'm, we're going to use our, uh, we're using our sleeping bags because I have twin sleeping bags and that way I don't have to go out and shop or I don't have to order them, but I can buy them. Leisure offers them. Well, it's not leisure. It's a it's company not leisure. It's up a there company in Winkler in Canada, called Aurora. I think and they called. put some sheet when you buy your vehicle that if you want to buy them from them you can't mattress pad and sheets they're pretty expensive though they're yeah the one thing you gotta have them shipped to the u.s which makes it more yeah but they're pretty expensive and uh something else that you know i haven't done but i'm considering is just getting sheets and going to an alterations person and having them alter and then somebody told you in norway was it norway that they the sheets are normally 32 oh, yeah. inches the seats are the beds are 32 by 76 but and this is gonna, what we're using. They were going to send us some. This is our RV super bag. And look at the color. It even matches I mean, all the rest of it. What would be perfect is if I oh. had gray, you know, sheets inside it. Or 
different yeah, than yeah, what I have. Yeah, it's kind of gray behind yeah. this. You can see the trim. But yeah, but we anyway. have something. So I'm not a shopper. I don't enjoy shopping. So one I'm, of the things I'm that we're thinking. doing with this RV is, although I've got, I've added a lot of stuff. We still have videos about other things that we're putting in. But we're not, we're taking our time doing it. And it's been kind of fun. Because we're always rushing. And yeah. I, I don't want to rush. Yeah. There's not a lot of rushing this with us all. Yeah, we, you know, this situation. is uh, By the a different way, season. I think everybody heard that the Canadian borders and the U.S. borders shut down for another month. Another month, it will probably be an, another couple months, but for sure another month. They announced that this past week. Uh, Bradley, I noticed on your last week that you had the glamour option on the cabinets, and this time you don't. Was there a reason why you didn't? I didn't even I didn't know, know there we was had the glamour. glamour. I didn't either. We just uh, bought maybe it. because we bought it at a show. We and bought they, ours at they a show. Really, that was like their little pride and joy. That last one we had, they fixed it up really good. Yep. And yeah, we did not. Um, we did not go and grab a. No, I don't know a, what the glamour a is. And add it. But what we the finish that we have now, it doesn't show fingerprints. And with the white, it seems like I had a lot of fingerprints here and there. Um, okay, uh, let's see another. Super chat. Let's see. I saw one come through way in the back there from Shirley. Wow, Shirley, you're being generous. Fourteen ninety nine. Howdy. I'm headed to Florida in October. Keep up the great videos. Hey, Shirley, we've been working on a new uh, blog post too about all the places that you want to camp in Florida. So before you go, we'll have that run. But uh, next, tomorrow we got a big one on camping in the UP of Michigan. So you'll want to grab that and, uh, and take a look at that. Um, all right, let's see. Question, retired in Florida, have two cats, wondering, best type of RV for me, no wet bath. Uh, yeah, I don't want a wet bath either, Jackie. That's another reason we went to the Class C. These are awesome dry uh, dry showers. Uh, you know, uh, cats are pretty easy. Two cats equal a dog, probably, at least for one space. of our size uh, it's for space. Um, they have their kitty litter boxes. have any problems. As long as your cat doesn't mind, your cats don't mind riding in a vehicle. Yeah. Uh, Frank, what's the biggest coach you can bring into a state park? Well, it depends obviously on the state park and you can find out when you go into them. But we find that, you know, anything much over 32 feet, you, you might have a little challenge in getting a spot. Most parks have room for that. When you get up over 40 feet, it's a whole other matter and it can be even crazier. So, um, so I, I, I don't know what to, what to suggest to you, but, uh, uh, the longer it is, you know, over 30 feet, the harder it is to find spots. Uh, you, you have to pretty much do a drive through spot. Uh, but most parks have them and most parks have that information, uh, right there. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have the Nomad Internet Night Gear router? We've only had it two weeks, so yeah, we still have it. Uh, do you leave it you plugged never know. in? Do you leave it plugged in all the time? Uh, when I'm on the road, yeah, I do. When we're not using it, it's just sitting in the driveway. Unless I'm working out in the driveway, I unplug it and uh, save it. You know, why burn it? Keep it on. Uh, like all routers, you should occasionally unplug it and kind of go through a reset and then plug it in again so it updates um, but we've had great luck great luck with it it's done a great job and we will uh, we'll let you know we're going to keep trying it here for quite a while uh question Re oh, i did that i'm sorry uh see what happens when i jump around i, I know i got out of order it's hard to read uh, da, uh jay spencer does the ford transit ac system cool the interior well enough in this hot weather when traveling down the road it, yeah we noticed it the other night the AC up front does a really good job. And this AC up above us here in the RV. The, right over the sleeping area. It? I don't even have it on there. You can see it. I can't. I'll have to I go watch a you. Dean video. You'll have to watch our video tour of it. Um, it's a 15,000 uh, BTU and it really cools the uh, sleeping area and, uh, and part of the galley. And it really does a nice job with that too. Uh, we're kind of looking around at different systems for air conditioning we're not sure we're we're we kind of kind of got our eyes on one that we could actually pull this Dometic out and replace it with another ac that is super super quiet uh it's made by um it's sold and installed by advanced rv and in uh, friends um mike neater uh mike uh oh, i can't i can't mike 
I can't remember Mike's last night. Mike uh, from uh, Mike. Yeah, Mike <laughs> Ned Nieder. I know a guy named Niederqual, and I keep saying it, but that's not it. It's uh, anyway, Mike okay. at at uh, our at uh, Advanced RV makes a really great quiet. What's one. so nice is there's like no noise whatsoever. Yeah, super but, quiet. But it's it's like throwing away money because we have a wonderful AC that works just great. Yeah. So is it really worth it? We tend to stay away from super hot weather. When we're in Florida, it's obviously really hot, but we try to stay about in the so 70s. I guess the moral of this part, the story is that if your AC goes out, check with Advanced RV and check the price and see if you want to pay what they charge and get a really quiet one. Yeah, it's, it is really quiet. If that's important to you. You've talked about winter RVing. How do you keep pipes from freezing? If you store your RV indoor facility, do you need to winterize? If it's going to be significantly below freezing, yes, you do have to winterize, even if it's indoors. Um, it is not a problem. Basically, we and we got a lot of videos on this on the channel, so look them up on our winter camping videos. But you uh, drain all the fresh water out. You blow out all the air in the in the pipes and the plumbing system. You put uh, antifreeze. Uh, you suck it in and you run that through the plumbing system. You don't have to do anything with your fresh water. You just leave that empty. There's nothing in there that's going to freeze or break. And you just run the antifreeze in. And then when you camp, you can still use your toilet. But you know, instead of pushing the button and having fresh water come in. You have a gallon jug of antifreeze and you pour that into the toilet, putting in an equal amount of whatever you deposited in the toilet. You put an equal amount of antifreeze and you flush with that. So it goes without saying you're not washing your dishes. You're taking fresh water with you, the water that you need. Yep. And, and then you have to think about where are you going to dump that dirty water because you're not going to put it in your gray tank. Yep. There are places that you can find. We have an RV um dealer that I go to right near us and for five bucks they let me empty it in the winter time and it's not a problem. So you no. brush your teeth, you know, you're spitting in the toilet, you know, yep. washing your face, it's a, little a little bit idea, of water. But you know, it's it's not bad. Spend a little bit of time over the toilet. Uh, what are the pros and cons of towing a small car with the B plus? Do you need it really? Well, we feel you don't. There are people who do. Our unit here could not tow a car. It doesn't have enough towing capacity. Uh, and that, and, and for people who do tow, you'd want to get a, a different one. This one only has a tongue weight capacity, I think, of 2,000 pounds. And that's the wonder, the unity That's the wonder. The unity you could tow, I think that's 5,000, 6,000, something like that. And with our little Class B road trek, we could we, we could. towed a trailer. Oh, yeah. We tow a car easily. Do, but we don't tow a car because these things are small enough, and it's so easy to just unplug if you're plugged at a campground. If you're not at a campground, it's just a matter of we just take the levelers up, and take off. And you could get an Uber driver if you're in the big city. Yeah. I you mean, they drive an RV in the city anyway. So right. call an Uber. You carpool if you're with other people. Yeah. You know. We've never felt we needed uh, needed one. Well, a couple the times only ways liked in, one. The only reason <laughs> I would get uh, a, a, like a like a like an Airstream, a big towable, is so I could have a cool big truck. And that's a he pretty good reason. He would love a truck. I would I would get one for that. So we've had and, and we have that. We, yeah, but we've not had it cool big truck that can pull a total trailer. That's true. And you like Airstreams. So. so as you know, we get different RVs all the time, every year. And we buy our RVs. So if nobody's giving us RVs. We buy them. But but um, we love this one. We really uh, and have loved the Leisure, the, the last one we have, and this one. So it's been mm -hmm. really fun. Um, Jan Anderson, uh, Jan and Dan from Destin, Florida. Thanks for the soft start information. That's a little device that'll start your air conditioner without having it suck up so much power that you have to run a generator. Um, we got ours installed this week. We'll be testing it out on our next trip soon. Uh, Janet, I think, said she's coming to the Upper Peninsula. That's where we'll be, but not until after Labor Day. And Labor Day week, you're getting a tooth pulled. So so hopefully that'll all go so well. So you're going to look like this <laughs> in that next one, right? But yeah. Oh, I hate to think about that. Uh, you hate to think about yeah, it. Yeah. So... Uh, Good to you guys, Jan and Dan and Dustin. Um, <laughs> let's see what else we got here. Uh, have you ever had service problems? You know, like with everybody else, sometimes you can't get in. Uh, 
just what Jan did, for example, we gave Jan some suggestions. She had written us about the soft start. She said, well, who can I get to install it? And I said, call a mobile RV tech. My son had some issues with his RV a couple of weeks ago. And he couldn't Trailer. get in. He couldn't get into his local RV dealer for weeks. You know, they said in October. Well, he needed to go on a trip. I said the same thing. Call an our mobile RV tech. He did. These guys are geniuses. They can get everything done in a day. And they're getting so busy, they're going crazy. I right. think because you're telling everybody about them. So we, we've not had problems. We usually use mobile RV techs. And that's what Jan and Dan did down in Florida. I think they used one. We've used them down there before. Lacey's RV service. Great guys. They come right to you in the campground, and they'll do the work. They know everything about just about every kind of RV. It's kind of the same things that keep breaking. And that, yeah, the second part is. of that question was, how did we meet? How we, we met meet? At, When we met, we were 17 and 18 at a dance at uh, Bay City, Michigan. On was the I Bay 18? There. I thought I was 19 and you were 18. No, 17, 18. Wow. We were yeah, babies. We were babies. And we met, at a, we met at a dance. And it was a roller skating rink that, that was outside. And then what, once or twice a week, they put on dances. Yep. And I had met Mike's friends with my best girlfriend at McDonald's, you know, when you're that young. And uh, that's how we met friends. Yep. And met your friends at McDonald's. Ever since then. You never know who you're going to meet at McDonald's and then a little dance. Steve, what appliance do you use for cooking? Sometimes we use the Instant Pot, rarely. Most of the time, we use a little outside grill or the burner, the three burn, the two, two burner stove. Uh, here. My electric fry pan. Oh, yeah, electric fry pan. Yeah, like I said in that Nothing walk, sophisticated. That walk through tour. I mean, this person that had a quarter of a million dollar Class B did not have propane or the electric burner. She just had her little electric fry pan skillet. Yep. Maybe she eats out a lot. I don't know, uh, but but we use that little fry pan and and that's really good. It's nothing very it's fancy. We have the instant pot. We didn't really like the instant pot. I gotta really. find recipes that I like. Yeah, it, it, your hair's kind of. I know. I'm looking at my. Hair, I didn't know if I, I. didn't know if I should go. Huh? Yeah, it's true. My hair. I probably right? should, Stop huh? It. <laughs> I, it's time to get a haircut again. Yeah, you need a haircut. Or I can go put on a hat. Uh, that's a trouble. Uh, you been wearing a hat. Let's see. Uh, how do you guys do Christmas? Um, We're home. With a bunch of joy. We always are, are back in, in Michigan near come our home. Come back in for Thanksgiving. We come, yeah. And we may do Thanksgiving from the road if our kids will all join us someplace, but I doubt it. We're, I, I we're, doubt it because we we've usually, got one son that has to work. We usually come home every every year about Thanksgiving, and we stay there, stay here in Michigan until after the first of the year. And uh, we do Christmas. We love Christmas, and that's our favorite time of year. And then... Um, we also use that time to do all of our annual medical tech checkups when, uh, so we can do it with our own regular doctors. So we do all of our medical checkups in December and we kind of then, um, early January, we plot out roughly what we want to do that year and where we want to go, what the big trips are. And that's a hard task for us because we have so many places we want to go, what RV shows we'll see. Well, you can imagine all those plans went out the window this year and, uh, it's almost been kind of fun. We've really in, been enjoying it. So, but we do we do Christmas, and we, sometimes we even decorated the RV one year. For oh, we have a fun video. We went up to Bronner's in Michigan, Frankmuth, the, the big biggest Christmas big, store in the world. Yeah, yep. very nice people, and uh, we had fun decorating our Class B and put little decorations on our our dog of that time, Ty. <laughs> do you carry a firearm in your RV? Wouldn't tell you if we did. Yep. <laughs> Wouldn't tell you if we did. So there's your answer. Uh, That's how many too gallons? How many, yeah, it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sorry, Phyllis and Chris. You're going to get a lot of moderating <laughs> comments. Just delete them. You know, that's good. Uh, how many gallons is your black tank? 28. 28. We can get the two of us about a week before we have to uh, dump it. So uh, as, as you heard earlier, seldom are we in any place uh, a week. We usually move around a lot. How do you like the ride in the new RV? It's very comfortable. Very nice. It's quiet up there, and uh, it's very comfortable. And it's easy to get in and out of. Now, you don't have all the room that you do in the uh, Mercedes. The Mercedes, there's more room up there, but it's very nice. Yep. Bo's unhappy because he can't sit between us. Yeah. Hey, there's our friend Janet Matthews. Have you driven the Whitefish Bay Scenic Route along Lake Superior from Brimley, which is just 
west of the Sault Ste. Marie to near Paradise, which is near Taquamanon Falls. Lovely route with campgrounds and turnouts we have. We've done that. I've even done it the whole route on my bicycle, Janet. So we love it. Um, we're hoping to get up there. Yeah, we want to spend at least a month, maybe two. Um, are you shaking your head? I don't think we can get two. Well, we can one. get, it'll get pretty cold the end of October. Yeah. But, but, but September, October, we want to, about a month, we for sure we want to be up there. And again, oh, if you... Oh, she just got back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, if you uh, have not gone to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, fall's the best time, absolutely best time. And we're taking off after Labor Day. But I've got a big post on the blog tomorrow. I was working on the blog, our planning, our route, and Jennifer said, "Hey, why don't you? You should share that with her. You got all that research." So, big long post tomorrow uh, on RVLifestyle.com. Um, Ten of our favorite campsites, lots of pictures, lots of videos uh, about the UP. So be sure and check that out. Uh, do you know when Leisure Travel Van 2021 Wonder Rear Lounge or Twin Beds going to start putting levelers or have an option? I don't. Uh, again, we don't work for those guys. They're, they are uh, they sponsor. They put a little banner on the blog, and uh, they're great friends. Um, and we we check in with them a lot. I do think that the levelers will soon be an option. We put levelers on this wonder, but we did it ourselves. But we use the same company that Leisure Travel Van does for all their Unity models, and that's the Equalizer Company in Elkhart, Indiana. We have a video. Right here in the block. Go check that out. We drove to Elkhart. The day after we bought this, we drove to Elkhart and had them put it in. So they know how to do it. And I think Leisure takes its time and makes sure everything's right. And they bring some equalizer people up. But it should be. I would I would be surprised if it is not an option in 2021. So keep checking with them. Everything gets the price up. Yeah, yeah they're expensive. They're, they're about four grand to put those in. But... As we said in our video, my princess in the pea would not travel without them, right? And you're not about to get out there and put those little Legos out there. No, I'm yeah. sick of that. that, was, that. <laughs> we got sick of that rather quickly. Oh, yeah. You never could get it right. Do you change your own oil? Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> I don't. Never have in the car or in, in this. Never have. Our one grandson is dating the young woman who uh, knows how to change oil yeah. and do all that stuff. Her Liz. father taught her. It's great. Yeah. Uh, we just spent a week on the Mendocino Coast. Beautiful, but no cell coverage. Ooh. Do you have a recommendation how to check for cell coverage before a trip? Uh, I think there are apps. Um, I think it's called Open Signal. Look at that. Look for that app. But there are apps that will let you call up an area. Also look at Campendium. Campendium, the, it's a little site that lists campgrounds and reviews, and many of the reviews will tell you if there's cell phone coverage there and which one, which provider offers the best. Uh, how many miles do you drive per year? Usually 30,000 about. Uh, this year, it'll be much less, but uh, usually We're about grounded. 30. We're grounded. We're grounded. We're in a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Like a lot of other folks. Okay, let's go back through how long does it take to edit oh that's the job that's the task it's um i mean somebody was asking us we have to dinner with some friends and we're saying that every day of the week we have now what we have to do monday is the nbc video day tuesday is the podcast record day and then wednesday thursday friday are edit days for the saturday video and um, every day is a blog post day so, but it's usually about a three-day process. And he gets uh, tired to, of hearing me edit. say, how about every other Saturday for yeah. another video? Uh, so that, uh, that keeps, us, uh, keeps us going. Um, what is a macerator? <laughs> it's, do you really want to know? It grinds up the poop <laughs> when you empty your black tank. The and sewage. Sewage. When and you empty your sewage, it grinds up the solids. That's a better and toilet way to paper say it. and toilet paper it grinds out everything up. Now in this unit, it, we have kind of like a double macerator system. There's one on the toilet, so it kind of grinds it up as it gets dropped into the black tank. I've got to understand how that works. Push a button. I know. I mean, I've got to figure There's it out. Two buttons because on the we had the wonder for two weeks and we used a lot of water. When you so do the macerator, it, it it uses a lot of water. 
But if you just use the regular flush button, which is like everybody else's, except it's a button, it's not a step. It's it's uh, you know it it uses whatever water you want to put into it. So. And does not everyone have the macerator no. outside? So for some reason we got double, or does everybody right. get double? Uh, we wanted the macerator option, which is much easier and cleaner to dump. So that's the one on okay. the black tank just before you you dump it into so the we, sewer. So we that's why we so have we two. have that as an option. That's why we have two, right? Okay. So others who would just get this, it would be the macerator, and then they would use that big four inch. Because the, then the, the logic would be to, I suppose they all come with the toilet that's in here because it's the wonder. Right. You wouldn't want this, the toilet with the little If I thing. could, I would you have them, had... I, would, I would go away with the internal and just put the regular step toilet in. Okay. And I bet we could do that. Reasonable. I bet the toilet that we have costs more money than just yes. a little regular toilet. It does. And we don't want to use that. No. So that's something to be aware of in case yeah. you get a wonder. So if you have one built. When you buy them yeah. off a lot or, you know, it, you, you yeah. can't do it. Do you think RVers could find a GMRS channel to monitor like truckers do at Channel 19? Would be interested in knowing the interest. Sure, if you could get enough of, of RVers to agree to it and to, and to install it. I'm going to do Channel 7 on the GMRS radio service. And I'm going to listen to that as we're on the freeway and on the highways. Quiet, Bo. Yeah, Bo's out barking. He's getting himself worked out. He, he got a bunny last night, baby bunny. Okay, so what's bad is uh, we've got our neighbor's got an apple tree, so there's always deer there eating the apples this time of year. And earlier, our neighbor was teaching one of their kids how to ride a bike. And so, all and so he was very was interested. Baby. And then he also knows about where those baby bunnies are. Well, right now, somebody's it? probably walking their dog. He's getting it's... himself. He's getting himself worked up. But anyway, M. Davis. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Channel Seven's where we're going to hang out, and we'll see if there's any truckers on there. We'll see if there's any RVers. It would be a big, uh, big task to get a bunch of them. Now, Midland, like I said, that's why they sent us these radios. They're trying to really promote GMRS and these radios with RVers, and uh, I wish them luck. I think it'd be great. They're, it's really great communications, but I don't know whether you'll get enough of them out there to make it uh, worthwhile. All right, uh, Jeff, can you say hi to our 11-year-old son who's watching? His name is Justice. We're getting ready for our third RV trip. Hey, Justice, how are you? Sir, glad to say it. Um, <laughs> Have fun on that third RV trip. Um, let's see, what else? Did you wonder where they're going? wonder where they've been. Uh, did you get the Midland two-way radios because you wanted to use them with the larger and permanent radio? No. They sent us the two-way radios, which which would be enough for most people. You know, they're just a little handheld radio. Hello, one, two, three. Um, they have a really good range. They say they can have up to five miles. I've never seen five miles. But, you know, in the woods, you can get a half mile, quarter mile, a little open country, easy a mile, and sometimes more. Um, and we use them to communicate with cars behind us. If somebody's coming behind us, we use it for Jennifer to direct me in so I don't bump into trees. Which, uh, and you can use them when you do walks if you separate for some reason. And like I said in the video, cell phones don't always work. Yeah. Uh, do you? Uh, how do you plan your travel to avoid low tunnels and overpasses? We never run into an over. We don't <laughs> no, we've never east. run into one, <laughs> but we've never encountered an, a low overpass anywhere. Almost. Ran oh, into one, one time we did years ago. In, um, we were out east. No, we were we were west. We were in Iowa. We were in Iowa. We were near the Quad Cities there. Uh, but we had plenty of notice about it, signs everywhere. We've never had a problem with a low tunnel. The only time we really almost had a problem is when I almost backed into a, a walkway at our condo. <laughs> we were unloading it and I was backing up. I always say you got to look not just behind you, but look up. And I wasn't looking up and I came... Like that close. Yeah, thankfully somebody yelled. That was in a different RV. That's so, why we have. So it was good. Uh, so, okay, going on through for your questions. Um, let's see here. Oh, it's 8 o'clock already, Is Mr. It? Oh, Mike. my gosh, it's time to go. How do you compare Ford chassis versus the Mercedes? Uh, we've written a, a blog post on that, a really extensive blog post at rvlifestyle.com. But bottom line really like all the upgrades in the 2020 Ford Transit chassis. I would say they're, it's pretty comparable to the Mercedes. Um, 
the ride on the Ford is much more like an SUV where the Mercedes Sprinter, uh, unless it has air suspension or some special work in the back, like, you know, little, those little, um, those little, uh, I forget the sumo, sumo springs. Um, Mercedes is a little rougher ride. Uh, we don't think we need any of those springs or any suspension changes because this ride's more like an SUV. It's really good. Uh, all right. With online schooling, are you seeing families continuing RVing this year and have kids do schooling via computer on the lo on the road? I think they're yes. going to be. So many people have learned how to work now remotely. And why couldn't you work from your RV? And so many people are so frustrated by their kids not being able to go to school. And I think they're saying, well, if we can work remotely, if our kids can go to school remotely, maybe if we do some schooling, road schooling, and uh, in fact, our friends at uh, Drive-In and Vibin, there's a thing called RV Masterclass. They're about ready to introduce a training class on uh, how to road school your kids with uh, by, a, by a homeschooler or a road schooler who is doing that, traveling and working from the road and teaching their kids. Lots of people have done it. More and more people, I think, will do it because there's a lot of people who want their kids in school or to have some sort of, you know, many people are homeschooling now that you know, that never were before. So I think it's going to be all, um, mean more people will be RVing. And I think you'll see lots of that. All right, going through real quick here to make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, I did miss it. Wow, I'm sorry. A super, Nita, that's the biggest super chat I have ever received, ever. Thank you. Everybody give a thumbs up to Nita. Bo says thank you. $49 super chat. Thank you. That That is above and beyond. She says, love your videos. Stay safe. Well, thank you. Nita, I don't know why I wasn't notified of your super chat because I was just scrolling down here and I saw it. And right next to it is a 20. We're cleaning up tonight, girl. <laughs> I'm taking you to dinner Friday night. Uh, a $20 Steve super chat from Steve generous. Ditto. Steve, thank you. That's so kind from the Poconos. Campgrounds and parks here are jam-packed. Ah, yeah. That's why we're here, That's Steve. why we're home right now. We, um, you have this thing, on holidays, we always try to stay home because we know for some people that's the only time they can go camping. Yeah, unless, you know, we had a family commitment. Like, actually, we had like three places we were supposed to be this weekend. This week, we could have gone. Yeah, yeah, our daughter and son-in-law and the grandkids uh, wanted to go to the condo, and so we were going to camp a little bit and join them at the condo, and things didn't work out for them to go. And then our youngest boy and his wife and the kids invited us to join them at Higgins Lake, Michigan. And uh, we didn't get campsites early because we had other things that were going on. Oh, we were also supposed to be at uh, the Chautauqua Lake, Lakeside. Anyway, it just got too complicated. But we had all these things and then we're home. But, you know, it's been nice being home. Yep, it, it is. Joan, how do I buy this rig when you're done with it? Oh, <laughs> everybody's asking you know, we usually sell these things after about a year and a half because we can find that's the sweet spot for the second year depreciation, third year is, is way down, but you know, you, you can almost break even because when you've done a lot of upgrades like this, I don't know. I don't know how long we'll keep this. Uh, I, right you now, are, I'm saying, you're it's, saying it's our forever. I, now I say it's my forever, unless somebody gives us that class A you were talking about. Well, I don't think I really. Uh, yeah. We you know, unless we're going to go park ourselves someplace. I just, I don't. It's, uh, it's a different type of uh, camping. And you never say never about anything. I, a class A, I picture going someplace, having a car, totally yeah, exploring I, an area for a couple months and then this getting is, it. This is our sweet spot. This, this, this RV, this, this size RV. And, and while we may get another brand someday, someday we might end up with a towable. Who knows? Someday we might try a fifth wheel. I don't think so. But I don't think. May, well, who knows? Unless no one else. Get, we could probably go back to a tent. We could. Or a little backwards. We like tents, too. Uh, quick question um, from Brandon. I installed the soft start that you recommended. Look at that video. A big, big post on the blog. Soft start, if you don't know what that is, it's this really cool thing. Right now, to run the AC, okay, I have to run the, the, ge the generator or be plugged into shore power, 30 amp shore power. Because it, when it starts, the compressor takes just all this power to start it. The soft start, soft start is a little device that you can install in the air conditioner that will let you do what Brandon is doing. He's now plugged into 20 amp service, which is basically 110 from a house. And he's able to run his AC. He says he's doing it right now. And uh, why do not manufacturers have soft start standard? Because it adds cost to the, to the, to the uh, RV. Some of them do. 
Some of them do, but uh, well, some of the ACs do, but I don't know why they, they do. They don't. Um, they may do them as an option, but this one is, is a really great system. Look on our blog post. The other thing is I could actually run it. So say we're in a rest area. We're going to have lunch. And right now to run the AC, if it's hot, I have to turn on the generator. And if there's people around us, it's noisy. But for 15, 20 minutes with full batteries, I could run the AC. We could casually eat our dinner for, you know, our lunch for a half hour and then take off. And I wouldn't have to turn on the generator. That's what Soft Start does. It lets you manage. Your, uh, it doesn't take as much um, as much juice out of it. And you say the added cost of adding that. And most people it's don't even know to million. ask for that. Yeah. You wouldn't know to ask for that. No, you wouldn't. And uh, so read the post on RVLifestyle.com. Search Soft Start. And, uh, you know, we have a search function on RVLifestyle.com. There's also, uh, I'm going to, if we don't get a different AC system, which we probably won't, but if we don't, a lot of money just it's to... like three grand to do it. And I don't need to spend it. I think uh, that's the next thing I'll have installed is the soft spot on ours. And many of you have had it and it works great. So, all right. Um, do you have security cameras outside of the motorhome? And if so, which one? I do have a couple of them from my house, like the Ring, and I have uh, Simply Safe. When we're on the road, I do not have a security outside camera. Outside of your motorhome. Of the, outside of the motorhome. I do have a, a back camera. Uh, I do have a dash camera that will work with infrared, but um, I have the best security system in the world. A 65 pound Norwegian elk hound that loves to bark at Oh, noises. he's always looking for something to bark so, at. Uh, but, but when it's parked there, uh, we do. We do have, uh, have, and the one time that we were broken into, we had a picture of the person casing the thing. Okay, almost the last question. We're getting down to three quick more. This is from Debbie. What do you and other RVers do about church pre-COVID? Um, if we're in an area, we'll attend in person. We kind of love to attend in person as we travel around because you get to meet other people, and everybody's like, "Oh, are you in that RV? That's great." Uh, Post-COVID, online. Yeah. In fact, we're probably attending more churches watching. That was yeah, our entertainment gonna... last night. We watched a, a church service last night instead of watching TV. We watched, You watched one this morning from our church down in Destin that we go to. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so online is, is great. But, but when you're on the road, you know what, you know, your denomination, what your beliefs are. And so you look for a church that now, is what you believe. When we go west, my on my bucket list this year was to visit a church type that I've never been before. And I was really looking forward to going to a cowboy church. Oh. I really, really was looking forward to that. Uh, so we're going to go try a cowboy church someplace, uh, which is just, you know, it's just the kind of music you have, and, uh, the, the lifestyle. But um, yeah, visit them in person if you can. It's a lot of fun. You, you'll find great information about the area. Oh, yeah. You get to meet people. Do you ever have problems crossing state lines with fresh produce? No, never. Nobody checks you when you cross state lines. I've never had a had a problem ever. Um, when we go into Canada, we've been asked about fruit a couple of times. Alcohol really... surprised me when they ask about alcohol. Yeah, they want to make sure you don't have mass vast amounts of alcohol. Um, a question like you, we don't watch a lot of TV. Our unit has the wine guard and the dish on the top. Are there problems with removing the dish and adding more solar? Um, they shouldn't. They're just some screws that go in. You just want to put really yeah, good, oh. really good caulk over it. So waterproof caulk. Uh, if you're comfortable doing that, you can do it. But if not, um, an RV tech can do it and uh, without any problem. Yeah, get a good tech. How do you eliminate cooking odors? We have a little tiny air filter purifier that plugs into. We picked it up at an RV show, and it does a great job of getting smells out. Uh, all right, let's And I try see. to cook outside as much as we can. Um, all right, let's see. Here's somebody. That, I don't know if this is true. I, 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 she said, you need the monitor on the Wonder RTB and the Unity Twin Bed because the placement of the black tank, it needs the macerator to pump the waste uphill to the black tank. Ah, Linda, thank you. Linda, I didn't know that. Thank you, Linda. Linda, you get the award for tonight. <laughs> Which is thank you. I'll have Otherwise, to check that we out. probably would have had a terrible disaster with. I'll send a question to you, but, but so we're going to use more water. Yeah, I, I, that's a bummer. Bummer. We'll have to see how that works out on a longer trip. Um, Linda, thank you for jumping that in. That makes sense. Uh, so maybe that's why. Maybe it's not them being nice and giving us a, a good toilet. <laughs> that's the way they have to do it. 
Uh, that makes a lot of sense. All right, last one. We could have had a real crisis here. <laughs> of the big three RV shows, Tampa, Hershey, and Fontana, where can you get the best deal on the new Class A? Mm. Is there additional wiggle room on the show price? A uh, little tiny bit. They sell the them so quickly. At Tampa, those shows. Hershey, Fontana, all about the same. Either one of those. They're all canceled this year. I don't know about Tampa next year, but, but it may be. Um, I mean, they're gone. Like, you need to be there the first day. The, yeah, they don't do a lot of... They don't. I mean, like, the leisure ones are gone. They do not do a lot of bargaining. And I get that question, how much wiggle room? You are very lucky with almost any RV, except maybe some of the mass-produced ones by the huge corporations that are, you know, rather inexpensive. You're lucky to get anything more than a 5% discount, if, if that. If you're ordering a special order one, you probably won't come anywhere near that. If it's off the lot and it's in their inventory, maybe, maybe there's a little wiggle room. Yeah. But it's a seller's market and RVs do not discount much at all. So there you go. Well, I am very sorry for everybody that we have missed and we've gotten it's, almost it's like down. It's like 815. Uh, Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. James Harris says, I didn't answer a $20 super oh, chat and a $5 sticker. I thought oh, I did sorry. the sticker. I'm going to go back, James. Let me scroll through here. Gosh, I'm sorry. Usually, uh, it's, uh, let's see. I got Steve. I got Nita's. I'm going back. I got Shirley's. I'm looking for yours. I thought I did you right at the top because you were the first one at the top, and I answered that. So let wow. me go back and look. Uh, there's Melania Queen, and I'm keep going. I know you I'm had one. Wait, when we start. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's a four ninety nine from Jazzbat. I think we answered that. I'm sorry. For yeah, there's got to be a this. better system. James Harrett. Okay. Uh, yeah, there it is, right there. Super Chat twenty dollars. I, I didn't do did. that, James. I'm so sorry. I guess because I didn't see a question there. So James, thank you. Okay, there's <laughs> got to be a better system for this. Yeah, there isn't. Um, well, it's color, but it's it's very. Yeah, it's this it's hard. Good. It what it does on this program is it highlights it in color for me on the screen I see, but it, it's in it's way in the bottom. So I, there's all these people apart. I get a little notice that'll pop up on the screen and then I have to scroll down and find it. So I saw that. Thank you, James. And then then here's the five dollar one. James. I did I, I that was the five dollar sticker. I did acknowledge that right at the very top, but I missed the twenty dollar one. So you guys just spent a lot of money tonight. I guess uh, maybe we should stay on longer. We can make this a <laughs> telethon. <laughs> the Mike and Jen telethon, yeah, super chat telethon. You guys, thank you so much for uh, for watching. Um, we got a busy week this week. Uh, big blog post tomorrow on places you can go camp in Michigan's UP, uh, so you can try it. Uh, there he said the moderator deleted it. No, no, we they were there. I just had to go up and find it. So uh, you're welcome, James. Sorry I missed them, and sometimes it happens. We do our best. Honest, it's hard to multitask, answer questions, make sure that the technology is working and the signal's okay. And uh, sometimes I miss them. And um, and I hate to do that, especially on a super chat. I, James says he bought something because of us. I bought the FX because uh, of you guys. Wow, he's got a Leisure Travel Vans FX. Uh, that's the one we had before. We loved it. And like I said, James, we sometimes miss it even now. So, So that's great. Okay, so big blog post tomorrow on camping in the Michigan GP. Go to rvlifestyle.com and uh, check that. Also, um, Wednesday, we've got a really interesting interview on the RV podcast. If you're not a subscriber, go subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever your favorite podcast app. Uh, it's on um, a, a way you can find f places to camp for almost nothing, just a small fee in church parking lots. You know how Harvest Host works and overnight camping and uh, all those those services where you, and boondockers welcome. Well, now a number of churches, there's a company, a, a website that is helping churches. Uh, many of them even have hookups for RVers where you can, you travel through there, you can stay in their parking lot for free. And it's usually quieter in a nice safe well, area. They're going to put in a hookup, which is... Some of them have a hookup. They charge you like nine bucks to 11 bucks, something like that. Yeah, you got to charge something. Anyway, it's an interesting interview. That'll be in the podcast on uh, on uh, Wednesday. And we got lots of great contact coming every day on the blog. We're on all the social medias. Follow us there. We hope you guys have a really great, uh, great week wherever you are. Uh, be safe. Wear a mask. 
-hmm. and um, know how much uh, how much we love being with you every uh, Sunday night. We'll see you. Videos coming every week and lots more. Every other week, maybe. Mr. Yeah, she's saying I should do it every other week. Yeah. We're on a roll. It's uh, it's been great. All right. God bless y'all. Happy trails. <laughs>